Hey everyone, it is Friday, November 9th, episode 7 of Amnicon Studio. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I didn't record last week because life just wasn't going to allow it. It wasn't in the cards and I didn't post anywhere on social media about that, so I apologize. But I am here this week and I've got a little bit of stage fright. This is like take two or take three. <laughs> so fortunately I was only a few seconds into the other ones where I decided I had to stop and restart. <laughs> and I've got I've got a lot to share and I'm going to try and breeze right through it. Uh, we'll see. I wrote notes, but I'm not sure it, I'm not sure how organized I am going to be, and I am trying to keep my eye on the green dot, not looking at myself, because then I get flustered. Uh, <laughs> it's the, the stage fright back. Who knew if you take a few weeks off, you get nervous all over again. So, uh, this week, I've just got plain water, because I need to up my water intake again. I've been drinking a ton of tea, hot chocolate and apple cider because the cold has finally descended on our area and we've had our first little bit of snow and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see anything. It's all bright out there. You can see that it, the sun has come out. Even though it's a little cloudy, it's kind of popping in and out a little bit. So first things first, um, Works in progress. I have no FOs and I've got two works in progress. And the first one, which is living in my little boxy bag that I made myself, and I can't remember if I've shown this one on the show or not, but in it is a vanilla sock. It, you know, I always got to have a vanilla sock on the needles. I just finished decreasing on the gusset. Let's see how that shows. And I am slowly working down the heel. Maybe this will look better. Oh. Yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, yarn is Knit Picks Felici yarn. No surprise there. And it is in the Lost Lakes colorway, and I'm knitting them on two cirques, uh, size 2.5 millimeters, which I think is a US one. And I still got plenty of yarn to go for it. And the other thing that I'm working on that has, oh. This sock I started shortly after the last episode. I started it right before my work trip, which was in October. Uh, October on a Friday, I think, I can't remember if it was the last Friday of the month or the Friday before that because time is going so fast for me right now. I realized this morning or maybe last night that it, we have two weeks until Thanksgiving and Black Friday, and then, you know, all the just craziness of the holidays is going to, um, it's going to be crazier than it is right now, <laughs> which, oh boy, yeah. Uh, the other thing that I've been working on that has consumed all my TV time and a little bit of time in the morning before I get ready for work is a blanket. I... I got bit by the crochet bug. One of my friends and I were talking about mitered crochet uh, squares and this is something that I haven't done before so she was showing me uh, videos and her preferred uh, mitered square to work with and I fell down a rabbit hole on YouTube and discovered a new YouTuber and she had this idea, recipe, not really a pattern for uh, scrap gans, for using up all your old scraps. And of course, I thought that was wonderful. 
and I wanted to make something and I went digging in my stash and I don't have as much uh, scraps, acrylic scraps as I thought I did and a few of them were um, that Karen's Simply Soft, I think it's called, where it's really smooth and soft and pretty and um, I didn't want to mix that with regular acrylic so of course, I had to go out and buy yarn, but <laughs> I'm not sure if this is gonna if I'm gonna be able to show the whole thing. But this is the blanket that I'm working on. It is 119 stitches wide. I'm not sure how well that showed. Um, let's see my notes. Uh, it's 60 inches wide. 119 stitches and currently it is 37 inches deep and I'm aiming for well 60 inches and I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough yarn to complete that or if I'll need to buy more yarn which thankfully the local Walmart has um, got more in stock and the yarn is it's Red Heart um, the the colorful yarn is called Playful Stripes and I forgot to bring a ball band with me so I'm sorry about that but I was looking at all the different self striping yarns and I decided I like this one the best and I am fairly certain I'm going to keep this myself even though I've I don't need a blanket because we have a wood stove and usually we can't um, even in the dead of winter, we don't need blankets when we're out in the living room, but I love how this is turning out. And it's thick and heavy, and I've already curled up underneath it. I've held it up sideways and just draped it all along my body, and my son's already trying to claim it and curl up underneath it, and you know that it's going to be good if your son's already trying to steal it when it's still in progress. And I've got uh, three more balls or skeins of this yarn left. And I am knitting it up on a 9mm hook, which is a um, size M or N. I'm not really familiar with how crochet does their sizing, the crochet hooks, but I started with a regular boy crochet hook. Let's see, if, will that show up? I'm still getting used to this reverse mirror image thing, but I started out with this and there's something about this part where it kind of concaves in that doesn't work well for me. It makes my thumb sore, so I had to stop using this and I went to Hobby Lobby and I picked up a Clover uh, soft touch crochet hook and that let's see is that showing anything? No. One of these days I will get the lighting figured out here. In the meantime this is kind of my best spot. Um, but anyways, this is my first time using one of these crochet hooks, and I love it. It's it's comfortable. It's soft. I realize I need a bigger handle on my crochet hooks, and the head smooth is so smooth. It just glides through the yarn, and I'm just where with this one, it was. I think I spent more time fighting to get it into the yarn loops and pulling it out um, which it's got me thinking I forgot if you couldn't tell this is being crocheted with two strands of yarn I've got black and the multicolored one which this is actually showing a little true <laughs> to life surprisingly but um, yeah so that has been my my passion in the crafting for the last two or three weeks and right after 
that's been living pretty much on my couch. And then right after the last episode, I was walking through the craft aisle at Walmart. And I feel like I'm telling all my secrets now. My husband's probably going to think that I spend way more time in the craft aisle than I actually do. But I was going from one department to another. And I walked past the buttons. And these caught my eye. And I realized that they match the leftover yarn that I was using for that other baby surprise jacket. And it matches perfectly. Look at that. So I already have the buttons for the next baby surprise jacket, which that is not the right needles. <laughs> Those are my uh, Knit Picks circular needles for making socks on. I, I have a hard time letting go of things, and this is the set of needles that uh, broke my heart a few weeks back when the cable popped out. But I've got this sitting in a yarn bowl and just ready to go for when I'm ready to make that next baby surprise jacket. And what else have I been doing? I have been, I found a few uh, crochet podcasts on YouTube and I'm late to the party, I'm sure. I, after my friend found that one uh, YouTube video of the crochet miter, you know, how they have the suggested videos on the side. Yeah, I just kind of fell down the rabbit hole with that one. And I've been watching a gal called Jada and Stitches. And I think she's from Canada. And she's really positive and upbeat. And she laughs. She's got a little bit of an infectious laugh, I think. And it's nice to watch her videos because I usually got a smile on my face through part of it at least. Um, just because she's so positive, if nothing else. And <laughs> then I've been watching a little bit of the crochet crowd. And I think that guy's name is Mikey. And that YouTube series is mostly um, how-to videos. Uh, it looks like he's sponsored by Yarnspirations. And he gets a lot of pattern. He does the patterns and gets... I'm presuming he gets the yarn support from them and then he uh, does demonstrations on how to do the different things and the videos seem to be pretty prolific but I could be wrong just because I am just starting to to watch them and I mean I've got a huge back catalog on those two videos and then I discovered that I think it was Red Heart has a YouTube channel and I learned how acrylic yarn is made and it was really interesting actually but I was kind of wondering why the acrylic fibers are shipped out of the country to be dyed and then they come back and then they're spun into yarn. And so, well, I'm sure there's something there that you know they don't really want to talk about but I just thought that was interesting because I'm paying a little bit more attention to those sort of things whether you know they're made in the USA or they're assembled in the USA is it everything USA made and put together and whatnot and let's see I've there hasn't been much else going on with that because uh, deer hunting update my son got both a doe and a buck so we have been spending a lot of time with that the last couple of weeks I uh, two two weekends ago maybe I think so again the whole time thing it's just a blur to me but he got his doe over the weekend and I think it was Sunday oh I'm terrible um, so we took care of all that and we brought uh, stuff into one of the local processing places to have um, it made into venison sticks because this place makes well we always thought it made awesome uh, 
jalapeno and cheddar sticks. Very spicy, but not so spicy that I can't eat them because I'm kind of weak that way. <laughs> but um, so in about two or three weeks, I suppose we'll get that stuff back. And then the following weekend, he filled his buck tag. And that, that was a big boy. <laughs> We had a hard time with that one a little bit, but we're getting better at the whole um, processing and field dressing and all that and everything, and we did things a little bit differently with this one, and we decided to make venison sausage with this buck since he, um, we, we feel like we had enough with the ground venison and then the uh, venison sticks coming in and we have a meat grinder and a lot of know-how and enthusiasm for stuff so we we uh, took care of all that this past weekend and smoked the venison sausage and we wound up with so much venison sausage that we had to buy a second smoker and um, and my husband loves the new smoker. It's a uh, electric charbroil, and it, it comes with a remote, which is actually really handy. And that that is really nice because you're not running out every so often to check the temperature and make sure that it's within parameters. And so we're we're very happy with all that stuff and how everything turned out. Which means that, for the most part, we are done with deer hunting. Uh, there, we still have some tags to fill, but they're all for antlerless deer. And right now, all we're seeing are bucks, because we're still checking the game cams and um, putting stuff out for the deer. So they can kind of come to our place, kind of like a sanctuary. I, I like to think of it, you know, a place that they don't have to worry about, um, a refuge of sorts, if you will. So I think I just kind of took care of the deer hunting update, nature notes, and barefoot in the kitchen all in one. <laughs> well, uh, let me go, th I'll keep going through and, and see. Uh, books, I gave up on A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. I read those first 30, uh, 30 pages, and then I didn't touch the book, and then it came up for renewal, and I renewed it again, and then I didn't touch it for another week, and I decided, you know what, this is not the time of year for me to try to read that, so it went back to the library, and back on my to-be-read list, so I'm not too sad about that. Although, I don't have anything to read before bed, so I've been watching crochet YouTube videos. And we I've been listening to, well, I was listening to Ender in Exile by Scott Orson Card, I think his name is. Somewhere about that. And that had expired on me, and then I am waiting for it to renew. And then the sucker renewed while I wasn't aware of it. And now I'm waiting for it to renew again. <laughs> but in the meantime, I picked up an audiobook from the library called The Rosie Project. And this one is, it came on my radar a few months ago as a book club reading for a book club that meets in the public library in the town city that I work. And it is Don Tillman, genetics professor, is getting married. Or he will be when his 16 page scientifically valid survey yields a candidate. See the wife project. Designed to filter out the drinkers, the smokers, the vegans, the late arrivers, Don's questionnaire is for the socially challenged academic, the most logical method to find the perfect partner. Enter Rosie Jarman. Don quickly disqualifies her as a potential wife, but is drawn into Rosie's quest to find her biological father. See, 
the father project. When something like a friendship develops, Don must confront the spontane spontaneous whirlwind that is Rosie and the decidedly unscientific conclusion that sometimes you don't find love, it finds you. If you like uh, funny romances, go get this book. Because I wasn't sure if I would like this. I'm not even sure if it was the right time of year for me to listen to it, if we're going to be honest. Because I'm feeling the, the urge to read mysteries and old classics. I never... I never got to read Sleepy Hollow this year, like I have been doing the last few years. So, I mean, that kind of book is what I feel sort of drawn to right now, but this, this is good. The, uh, Don, he, if you watch The Big Bang Theory, he's like Sheldon. He's, he's got two best friends uh, who are husband and wife, and their names are Jean and Claudia. And Jean is... He's a womanizer. He's got this, I don't know yet if like his wife is aware of what he's doing or if it's just something that he's told Don to kind of cover his tracks, but he has this long-term project to sleep with as many women as possible from different countries. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he's like 60 some years old and he's Oh, what it, I don't even know what they would call that, but he's, that's nasty. So he's giving, he's the one that's giving Don advice on women. And he's, him and his wife, who are both, oh, Claudia is a psychologist, and Don, or Jean is a professor of psychology. And I just, I'm thinking about some of the little instances and I'm just shaking my head, but Don, the main character, goes to them for advice and he's so abrupt with some of the stuff. Like he's, he sends text messages, uh, urgent meeting tomorrow at 6 a.m., meet for coffee. And, you know, the guy will text back and say yay or nay or whatever and like, they recognize something in Don that Don doesn't recognize in himself. But shortly after listening to this story, you realize what makes Don unique, which by my saying that, you probably have figured it out. <laughs> but he's very into routine, doesn't want to change any routine. He's not close to anybody. He only has two friends. He doesn't have much of a... Um, a dating life. He has no social life. He's constantly running into problems with the dean. And the dean goes, well, technically, technically you didn't break the rules when you did this, but let's not do that again, okay? And, <laughs> and meanwhile, he's trying to wonder why uh, he needs to, you know, not do certain things. Like the, the case of he he got into a little bit of a discussion with one of his students and of course they couldn't continue it on because they were in class but then when like the semester changed the student decided to lodge a report against him about it and he decided when he was walking through the cafeteria he saw one of the other teachers or professors with a, a flounder <laughs> and managed to sweet talk himself into getting that flounder and he carried it around for four days before he saw the student again and then he continued on the discussion and gave the student this dead flounder and you have to you have to read the story to, to know what that whole thing was about but then he Rosie shows up in his uh, doorway at the college and he thought that his friend Jean had sent her to participate in the wife project. And so he asked her out to dinner and there was an incident occurred, <laughs> which, um, you know, misunderstandings abound. And that's where most of the, the comedy comes from in this. But 
you know, you really grow to care about him and you want to see him succeed in his quest to find a wife. And it's it's really sweet. Uh, yeah, it's it's really sweet. And he, of course, he's trying to do the right thing and what he thinks you know, people want to hear. Like when Rosie asked him if he thought she was attractive. Well, previously she said she didn't want to be seen as an object. She wanted to be seen as for herself and not as, you know, a sexual thing. So he, even though he thinks that she's the most beautiful woman that he's ever seen in his life, he goes, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> In which he found out the next day that that was the wrong answer. And apparently, <laughs> and then the poor girl who's in uh, college working towards her PhD in psychology, who's in the same department as Jean, he remarked that she's been eating chocolate cake for breakfast for like the last several days, ever since she saw Don and he told her that. So I'm really curious to see where this goes. I mean, I've already read the Wikipedia entry. And I know how it ends and all that and stuff, which, yay. But it's the story of how they get there is what I can't wait to, to finish seeing. So, yeah. Chickens. The chickens are very chickeny. <laughs> the babies have the babies, the babies, babies. They move themselves into the big coop. And I don't know if it was something they decided to do themselves or if it was Mama Brahma kind of instigating things. But we, my son went to tuck them in one night and he said, Mom, they're all in there. Yay! And we didn't have to do any of the stealthy at night, go grab them out of the little coop and push them in the other ones. So they've been more or less accepted into the big flock, although they're still technically on the bottom of the pecking order. But they are all over the place in the coop. And I don't know if Mama is being Mama much to them anymore. She's still kind of keeping an eye out for them, but they're sort of all over. Like, I think a few of them are sleeping on the roosts. One was sleeping in a bucket. One managed to get up into the nesting boxes and was sleeping there. And they, they, I forget what it's like to hear those little, little cheep, cheep, cheep sounds. And I kind of miss that. But they're, they're starting to get their big girl and big boy voices. And we've started feeding fermented feed to the chickens since they can't get any bugs anymore. And the baby babies are the first ones to go to the the feeder trough and the bowls when we go in and dump it. They just go and they do 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 and get as much as they can before they possibly get pushed out. Although I think they're starting to kind of hold their own a little bit, which is nice because I always hate when the the pecking order is being played out. It just drives me nuts. And before it started snowing, I discovered a second secret nest. And this one was really close to the coop itself. We've got this little line of I can't remember if it's blackberry, raspberry canes that kind of uh, are like a fence to a little courtyard thing next to the coop that I, I keep encouraging the chickens to go in and like clear out, which they are. They're get, they've gotten rid of most of the brush. So they have a place to scratch and peck and not rip up my main yard. But in those raspberry canes, I spotted a chicken sitting there and I realized that there's another nest there and I was able to pull out a few more eggs out of that one. And uh, I forgot to check that other nest that's under the little coop. So I'll have to do that. The chickens have not been spending a lot of time outside because of the snow and the cold. 
And until more recent, we had a lot of rain. And nobody wants to be in that, especially in 30 degree temperatures. See, I already mentioned the venison sausage, but I didn't talk about the jerky. I mean, my husband is really good at making jerky on the smoker, and he has he has some secret mixture of spices and everything that he uses to prepare the venison before making it, and it always turns out so good. And it, stuff that you wouldn't think would taste well together, but it does. It just it's so good. <sighs> yeah, the spice recipe that we used for the summer sausage, we've actually been using it on a few other meat type things, and the flavor is so good. And I'm feeling really greedy and not, I don't want to share it. I do not want to share the spice <laughs> recipe or where I found it from, but it's so good. I mean, we've even put it on eggs. And there is just something there. It just kind of brings out the other flavor. Very tasty. Uh, let's see. I covered homestead stuff. I kind of went into nature notes that the snow finally happened, although you can't really see it in the window because everything's kind of blown out. Uh, I've been... Uh, right before the snow... Blue, I set up my shepherd's hooks and uh, I, I even have one back there by the rabbit hutch which if you can see something kind of moving that's one of the rabbit's ears <laughs> um, so I thought we could set that up there and anybody who's sitting in the uh, dining room would be able to watch the birds because I have a suet cake set up on the birch tree that I can watch the birds while I'm doing dishes or whatever working at the counter and then I've got suet cakes and bird feeders set up on shepherd hooks in the front I think it's snowing <laughs> yeah it's snowing not heavy but just enough to catch my eye so I have been filling up the suet cake feeders, the woodpeckers, the chickadees, and a few other birds have been coming and feeding off of them. And the blue jays. Oh, the blue jays are kind of obnoxious. And I'm trying to decide whether it would be worth to put down like a little flat thing and have um, bird seed in there or put it there so that any bird seed or suet cake drippings that fall won't get lost in the snow once we get a lot of snow on the ground. But I, ha I haven't decided. Right now I just feel fortunate that I'm remembering to fill the, the feeders as, as uh, quickly as I can while they're emptied. Uh, and this weekend, we are going to start um, a new project, which isn't really new, but now that we're not deer hunting intensely, we feel comfortable enough to go out in the back 20 and start harvesting wood for the wood stove. Um, there's not much snow. I, I'd be surprised if we had an inch and a half. And we don't have to worry about scaring away the deer by the sounds of the ATV and the chainsaws. So there's a few back there that my husband has had his eye on that he would like to take care of now rather than later. So I'm not sure how long we'll be doing this. Either until we run out of trees to harvest or pick up. Because we we harvest the the trees that have fallen too or that we get a lot of snow and I'm not really looking forward to a lot of snow we we deserve a break after the last few years and I guess the almanac has said mild winter so I, I'm really hoping they stay true to that um, 
not a lot of snow if nothing else. We've had so much rain this year that we don't need we don't need the snow to refill all the lake basins and such or whatever the the fancy terms for that is. Uh, somebody told me recently that Lake Superior is really high right now. Like a couple feet high at least. And let's see. Sun. I mentioned we got some sun today. A little bit of sun yesterday. But now it's kind of going behind the clouds again, which is a drag because I love the sun and it makes me feel so much more chipper and happy when I see it, which is kind of ironic. I'm a water sign, but I love the sun. Um, coffee talk. Well, I have been all over the board with all my different things and there's not a whole lot for me to chit chat about with the coffee talk. Although I will say I am really annoyed with how, <laughs> with how Halloween came. November 1st, BAM! All things Christmas. And it feels even worse this year than in previous years. I went to a place of business yesterday to take care of some things. And they had a um, window painting thing that somebody drew of a snow globe and it said winter wonderland or some such thing on it. It was really nice. Very nice. But it's November 9th, people. It's not even close to Christmas. And I'm not the only one thinking this. I can see it on my Facebook feed all the time. In fact, I think on Instagram, and I'd stolen this from whoever had shared it, and I posted it on my Facebook feed, and it's of Santa, and it says, whoa, 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 let's, let's eat the turkey first. <laughs> it's like, that's so true. It's, oh, man, even Walmart has got like the inflatable Christmas trees hanging outside their building now, and even my son, who's 13 and should be like really excited about Christmas because of all the presents and stuff, even he's disgusted at like, we just went from Halloween right into Christmas and there's just no in between and I hope the the businesses take note of this this year and like maybe ease back a little bit but I'm sure they won't because it's all marketing and money and all that and I'm just yeah and you know, two weeks to Thanksgiving while I'm ranting about that and rehashing two weeks until Thanksgiving. And we have we have our plans for Thanksgiving. We're going over to my mother-in-law's and then my sister-in-law is coming up later in the week and we'll celebrate the holiday with her then. So it, in a way, it's kind of nice to do it that way because it kind of extends that warm, fuzzy feeling you know, holidays and family and stuff, but, um, it, at the same time, it just kind of reminds me that, you know, Christmas is around the corner, and Christmas means Christmas knitting, Christmas crafting, and I've been kind of thinking about some of that stuff for a while already, although it hasn't been mentioned too much in any of the knitting groups that I'm a part of, although one gal, one gal, um, has kind of started a list and she's kind of cranking out some things to sell in order to make money for Christmas. But yeah, not and anything, anyone that I think I would knit for, excuse me, um, I've already, I've already got done, I think. I've been kind of rolling through some of this stuff in my mind. It's like, you know, this person, I've got this, this person, I've got that, this person, oh, what to, what to do. And it's, I think I'll have an easier time with the stuff this year. Although I, I don't know if I did much knitting last year for gifts. I'm drawing a blank. 
I, I remember doing sewing. <laughs> I remember uh, doing quite a bit of snowing, sewing. It might be almost time for me to wrap this up. I'm starting to slur talk. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think real quick if there's anything else that I need to share. And I can't think of anything. And it's... 40 minutes into it. I'm so pleased because I thought I would ramble on a whole lot longer after not speaking with you guys for two weeks. Two, almost three weeks. Wow. Oh, the time. It's gone by. So that is it for this episode. Uh, thanks for sitting with me and visiting. And until next time, stay safe, and I hope the weather stays nice wherever you are. Bye.